I didn't really go anywhere. Went a few places, but didn't really go anywhere last week or the week before, just to and from work. Mm -hmm. Two two and a couple of days worth of two two weeks and a couple of days worth of uh tank instead of filling the tank up every week i was filled it up i was like Ooh. now for some odd, to this. do what I'm used to this yeah well for some odd reason my my gas mileage actually went down yeah but i had more fuel in the car which i guess because it's closer i yeah, shorter trips, shorter take trip. more fuel. But I was able to save money, <laughs> which was part of the part of the thing. And I was like, okay, woohoo. Let's see. Nope, wrong, wrong camera. Uh oh, Art's sitting out in his backyard somewhere. Can't hear you, Art. Wait a second. Maybe it's me. No. Very loud. I can't hear him. Sign in. I it's they're getting me. Killing me. Okay, so Art's getting to Zoom. Maybe you're output devices. If you can now manage all your Google accounts in one place, accent permissions are granted. Now you learn more. High definition stereo. Let's see. Now that's your speakers. Yeah, I know. I just wanted to see if I could hear him on the speakers. I can hear you guys fine. Now there you, there you are. All of a sudden, we heard you. So I well, didn't anything. I, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I uh, I hear you just fine right from the get go. We'll just we'll just say that it's it was DNS. It's something. <laughs> okay. What's going on, Mr. Art? I'm uh, just sitting here relaxing, listening to what the news is. That may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> I was going to say that uh, sounds like kind of an oxymoron now that I've said it. Listening to the news and relaxing, that is. Yeah, I'm not sure about that combo there. Uh, yeah. Well, it's interesting, uh, Jim. I'm still waiting for uh, uh, Martha Wells' books to come loose. So I've gotten off on a number of other uh, <laughs> authors in the meantime. Um, so, I just read uh, Jack London this week. He had a real good one. Uh, well... Over the years, I think I've read everything that uh, Jack London ever published uh, at least twice. So uh, I don't know. And he's, uh, he can get a bit tiresome um, in his point of view. This is the one about the whaling. He was stuck on a way, a seal, seal clubber ship. Yeah. With a bunch of bad folks, miscreants. Well, he's there bashing baby seals. And yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And bashing people, too. They didn't just well, well, Yeah, well, that's true. They were miscreants. He was a pretty good writer. Like a lot of writers of that period, he started out as a journalist and Actually, he was a journalist all the time he was publishing as well. So he's from our neck of the woods out here. I think you probably know. It's San Francisco. He said he spent time in San Francisco. 
Well, primarily Oakland. Mm -hmm. People people outside the area associate everything with San Francisco, in spite of the fact that they're rapidly becoming the third largest city in the area rather than the second. Behind uh, San Jose, which has been larger for many, many, many decades. And uh, Oakland is catching up, so any rate he uh, he he was a pretty interesting guy definitely a journalist hard drinker died at a relatively young age of kidney failure um, back in the days when they didn't do transplants and so forth and so on And who knows, the booze he was drink, drinking could have been uh, contaminated with methyl alcohol. <laughs> that is that is entirely possible if he was uh, around Prohibition time. No, no, no. He was dead. Jack London died in... 2000. 19, 19, oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. 1940 or something, wasn't it? No, no, no. 1914. I, oh, that, okay. That's one of the book that the book that I read was written in 1914. Yeah, but not 1940. 1940, he was decades in the ground at that oh, point. Really? Oh, yeah. Mm. He was a very popular author at the time. He had a style, a, a macho style, not uh, terribly different from Hemingway. Uh, and that was very popular in those days. At any rate, so as I say, I'm waking, wait, waiting for my, in my queue for Martha Wells and uh, I've, I think I've read four or five books since then that uh, happened to be available in the library. And so. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loaded up on uh, books on hold. I, I freed up a couple, but I stay I stay full, fully loaded on books on hold. Well, you can you can put how many on hold like a dozen or so it's a bunch uh probably like 20 but uh, then i go to then you got the uh your uh the other list your list wish list if you can't yeah. them, well, then you wish list them and then you go through all the holes and then you have to go to the wish list and then you go for the search and then you go through collections that collections thing is not bad yeah. I just finished, uh, well, I'm still reading my last Kathy Wells, number four. Kathy Wells or Martha Wells? Martha Wells, yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, Jack died in uh, 1916. Yeah. 16, yeah, okay. He died the year after my dad, uh, two years after my dad was born. Yeah, he died of, uh, I think he was only 40, 45 years old, something like that. I don't know. So you've got your uh, map there again, Leroy. They just printed this one for me. How is this one different from the last big one you had? Your Roku tags are printed right on it. Oh, okay. So they can't get off of there. Go away, go away. No, nope, ain't gonna happen. Cause uh, I, I broke down. I finally said, yes, I'm going to print this because this thing kept pushing the, uh, 
cards. The, the cards all. So I just said, okay. Okay. We'll try, we'll try this. <laughs> and it's only 14 bucks. So. Yeah, that uh, that printing deal is uh, is really a great deal. Uh, yeah, I imagine the media is probably a good portion of that. That's all they really charge you for, really. I mean, so, you know, so most they of the, you, they charge most you two dollar. Uh, this is the fifty four inch roll, only it's three foot. I didn't use everything I could, but they charge you two dollars per linear foot and i guess that includes the cost of the ink and everything but they say it's two dollars linear foot based on the material you're using uh-huh so is that in the that the one you've got there is all monochrome i assume right no there's actually color in there it's it, i didn't use a lot of color there's some color there and <laughs> in that corner and over here there's some red well the watermark looks right. like it's got some color in it too it does yeah yeah the, the uh that's the robot that i figured out how to i figured out how to make a layer and drop it behind the grid which was cool i was learning how to make how to use inkscape so, um, but no, there there was no there's no difference in the cost of color or whatever. It's two dollars a linear foot. Hmm. <laughs> How long does it take to do? I don't know. I submitted the print job yesterday. I got the email about two hours later that said. It was done to come and pick it up. And I said, okay. So huh. I would imagine that a print like this is probably pretty quick because there's there isn't a whole lot of color. It, it's uh, no, it takes the same amount of time. It's color printer. It's inkjet, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was inkjet. It so it's just a time it, to move the pen around then. Yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a fairly fast printer, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was probably less than 20 minutes, maybe as quick as 15. So but, now, does that ink smear at all, or is that pretty stable? Um, what they, when we took the class years ago, they, they recommended leaving the, the print out uh, in the air, in the open for a couple of minutes just to oh. give it, just to give it a chance to dry but it's got a uh, the print head has like a uv curing thingy that it passes over it with the ink and then it passes back over it with the uv light to cure the to cure it so it should be fairly stable so the uv just stabilizes it doesn't develop it it stabilizes it correct Okay. What kind of computer did you get, Steve? This is a Maestro Evolve 3. This one was an open box. This is a $30 laptop. Yeah. Oh, I got two of them. They were on Windows, though? It came with Windows 10 oh, okay. educational version on it, which I'd never heard of. Huh. And it never got a chance to be. Um, well, it that didn't surprise me. <laughs> 30 bucks, get rid of Windows, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see how they can sell the Windows license for that much, much less toss in a laptop. Education, they're trying to get an educational biz. Yeah, but it runs Mint pretty well. It'll do uh, it'll, Zoom it'll, meetings. It'll do Chrome. Yeah, I've got Chrome installed. Oh, cool. It runs pretty well. I've had 35 oh, tabs of it. Chromebook with it? Probably. I don't know. Yeah. I've never installed Android on anything. It's Chrome Flex now or whatever you oh. call it. 
Okay. Well, what's the regular price on? Sixty dollars at Micro Center. Wow. It says it's got an MSRP of one hundred and twenty. Wow! Wow! They gave it, them away. It would. It went on. Limit five per person. It went on sale right before school started, and it looked like it was probably a closeout kind of deal in the first place. But they were limiting them to five per person for sixty bucks a piece, and he just happened to get lucky and find two open boxes. Yeah. Oh, they had house. like twelve of them. I, in retrospect, I wish I'd gotten more. Yeah. Um, because like you know, if I, I've lost thirty dollars on accident before, so if I leave this thing in a hotel room. Yeah, whatever. Uh, that's and that's how things... I feel about like the Bofang radio. They're 25 bucks. If, yeah. you, if you drop it off the ceiling of a 40 story building, who cares? It's 25 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things I think is really cool about this, it comes with a uh, cell receiver in it. Oh. I can put a uh, I'm going to try it. I'm, I think I can SIM put a mint in. tag in it. Huh. Mint SIM card. Yeah. And I think it'll work. It shows up. I put in one that hadn't been activated yet. One of the try this for a week. But I couldn't activate it on here. But everything I've said, seen says that once you activate it, you can swap it. And it should just work. I may put the one out of my phone in here. How could you use that as a phone? It, it and Bluetooth. It, it would be. It does have Bluetooth, but it doesn't have the software to dial. It, it wouldn't be a phone. You do that for the, the data. Yeah. So you had the internet wherever. Here's Chrome phone. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I've got a Chrome phone number, a Google phone number, Google Voice. And that should work. But that's still using the internet, not the not, um, not the cell phone network. Yeah, that's true. But you get to the internet through your cell phone connection. Why not? Mm -hmm. You got data. Um, my only qualm with doing that is it uses a data, which in mint you pay for. Whereas if I could make it just be a telephone, I could talk forever on it so yeah, that's true but you got what four gig of data yeah that isn't a, a lot, lot of talk time. Talk time. yeah that's a lot of talk time mm -hmm. talk time is 60k max yeah and with the compression that'll be, be interesting Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, art. Uh, fundamental physical phenomenon known as Johnson. You know Johnson, the physical ph phenomena? Um. Johnson effect. It's a uh, quantum phase slip effect. That's not John. Um. Swedish, it's uh, Johnsonian. Josephson. Yeah, Josephson. Joseph. Yeah. Josephson. Um, not familiar with the name, but that doesn't mean anything. It, uh, uh, it has to do with superconducting. Uh, it, uh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Brian Josephson. 1973 Nobel Prize in yeah physics. Welsh. He's actually okay. Welsh. Oh, okay, uh, he's a they're uh, they're just physically demonstrated the Josephson effect or whatever it is. It's interesting. Uh, you might realize what he's saying. I couldn't. You got a link to the uh, article. Yep, in the meeting announcement. 
Okay, let me find that. Two, 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 two. Is this the Josephson junction thing? Yeah, yeah. Generate electricity from heat, if I remember. Oh, that. yes, yes, yes. I remember that. That was, that was like in the 60s or 70s, I think. 73, I think, is when he won his Nobel Prize. But uh, the effect was stated early, much earlier than that. Let's see. I'm looking for the link that you're talking about here. Fundamental effect of superconductor physics observed 30 years after it was predicted. That was the title. Hopefully it's in there. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. I just used the link and maybe I did copy. I, I copy it was in there. Well, give me a minute here. The first one, do you have August 24th? Uh, I, I see it. I see it. Okay, better you being insane than me. Well, I've already, uh, already been by that. Today. I just was uh, <laughs> taking a while to find it. And the battery of the week is the aluminum battery using redux aluminum as high density uh, storage. For seasonal energy storage. Yeah, Okay, come on, it's coming up here. Okay, cool. How many USB cables do you have, Steve? How many? Just one. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe you about that. <laughs> More like 100. I, I just reached into the box of USB cables and <laughs> threw them in another box. I've got multiple storage <laughs> locations for them. It's bad. Yeah, I've got like four or five boxes. <laughs> I thought you meant on me at the moment. Oh, oh, okay. Well, yeah. Actually, on me at the moment, I have three. Okay, that that we believe. I, that's I, I believe credible. that. That's more credible. That one I, I story. Four, one, yeah. five. five. <laughs> yeah, but but I have a reason for that. Actually, sure you do. Sure you do. Yeah. We weren't going to ask why. No, we absolutely. <laughs> There, there is a reason it was just in case this thing needed to be charged actually this box when i was doing those uh ultra wideband things and i needed to charge a bunch of them this box just never got cleared out from that so that's where these USB cables came from That is, uh, what is the drawback to this thing, the camera? Even when it's off, it seems like it's using power. It does not hold the charge. So it's got some leakage someplace or what? I think it's the way it was designed. This is the first generation camera that they came up with. And it had some it had some interesting issues. Um, like they had it, it's got a microphone built into it, but the microphone is tied to a different GPIO pin than what 
their software on that. And, uh, oh, okay, sorry. And uh, it it was tied to the to something that caused something else to not work, which was important. <laughs> so they just for, when all the firmware now just disables the microphone. Because the microphone is, <laughs> if it causes the other thing not to work. <laughs> not like, not like this. Set up. Yeah, all you need. No, I can't get to the power button. I don't like the thing that I put on there to cause it to keep it from being front heavy is right in the way of the power button. You just need a fish weight. Um, I do. <clears throat> but I bought I bought the, the new camera. I bought a new old camera because it was 50 bucks so you can mm -hmm. see the screen actually is working huh very good and it's currently set to read to so it's actually reading this one and this one there's one right there that that it, so my software still isn't the software on on the esp32 isn't reading it right but now now i shouldn't have to actually have it move because it should be able to read this one and this one and be able to tell which direction it's is facing okay at least in theory but you can kind of see maybe the red outline that says the april tags that it sees and if we move it around a little now it sees three of them. I don't know if you can. Yeah, I see a bunch of pink spots there. Yeah. I can't resolve them on the screen, but. Uh... Yeah, there's there's three of them. So now that's kind of a diagonal. So you know, if we figure out the angles of it, should be able to drive to wherever. So it doesn't have to go row and column, but it could go diagonally. Um, yes, that that's one of the hopes is that it, if it spins and it sees something like this, it might be able to recalculate itself and just say, oh, what I want's up there. And then just go straight up. But I'm actually, I'm really hoping to make it go sideways. So, okay. I'm hoping that, that it will be able to say, okay, I am facing to the right. I want to go up to, well, I, I see this one and this one. And so I know I'm facing to the right. And I want to go up to the zero line. So it, Hopefully we could just decide to slide up here. And then it's going, still going to need to figure out how to get to like zero, zero or zero, one or whatever. But hopefully it can slide. Hopefully that's what I'm trying to do. Ray is here. If I let Ray in, if I pay attention.
So you're home. New York. You're in, oh, some other warehouse then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where in New York? Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. Okay. Yes. Living dangerously, so to speak. Is that a uh, out of school university? Looks like a makerspace or the starts of a makerspace. No, it's a art studio place. Thing. Uh, this lady uses the laser machine to make giant stencils. And then she turns these stencils, they, she paints through them and she creates this. Oh. And uh, these things are like nine feet by 10 feet. If you get really close, you can see it's all ASCII characters. That's hmm. Wow. So you look at it and you think, what the hell? And yeah, there's. <laughs> Looks like a bad QR code. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> yeah. She has some really cool stuff there. A lot of paint spatter looking stuff. Really, 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 really close. You can see it's some. Like, it's like modern ASCII art. It is. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> so you cool. guys get to see the uh, the gallery before anybody else does. I think that's my favorite one right here. Okay. So how many of you bring it home with you, Ray? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Carol, it, it's you. like digital art. Uh, like over here, that one, the uh, the signature down there on the bottom is actually a giant chunk of aluminum that they 3D printed, then they cast it and everything. And this thing is like 12 foot by 14 foot. It's huge. Uh, that you can see here, like they um, they use the laser to create stencils, and they paint it through the stencil. Wow! And here's her big art studio. It's actually, kind of she weird. splatters art. She's a she's a modern day Jackson Pollock. Here's some of the stencils that she laser cuts. I mean, it's no secret of what how she does it. It's just she's pretty pretty damn good. Now, does she have students? She has uh, what I would call underlings. <laughs> I don't know. She, she has uh, people that work with her, um, kind of like long-term. Um, so they're uh, like they're like minions. They're, they're not exactly minions. They they do lasering for her. They do their own artwork. So they're kind of like interns. They're kind of like interns, yeah, but they're a lot more qualified. <laughs> yeah, we got month, day, year, you know. That's kind of cool. And you back out and, yeah. I don't want to touch that one because <laughs> it might cost me my year's salary. So... <laughs> Uh, just just settle with another laser cutter. It, it'll be all right. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that would be Ray's salary. <laughs> so <the> next thing. <laughs> so you're there to repair a laser or to install a laser or what? I like that one up there too. The green one, the black one. Um, we installed a laser machine a month or so ago, and um, it's just not performing up to my desires. So I'm 
I'm just trying to make it work better and better. So, so is this the first laser she owns, or has she owned other no, lasers? This, this is like her fourth. Their fourth one. They had some smaller ones, and then they uh, upgraded. Decided they really liked it, and then they got two three foot by four foot ones. And then they're like, um, those just aren't big enough because we want to do big art. So they decided to switch to these machines that are um, effectively these two. They are 80 watt, um, 1.6 meters by 0.9 meters. So they are uh, almost 36 inches by like, 61 inches, something like that. I'm making some goofy stuff, but I threw in a square just to mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see that on a painting somewhere and be like, yeah, that's me. I did that. Find, find the <laughs> hidden square. <laughs> yeah, it's like, where's Waldo? But here's the there's a square in there somewhere. <laughs> How good are your eyes? <laughs> so are, are both those from you? Both those lasers from you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Her earlier lasers were yours also or not? Yes, they were. Okay, cool. I'm just running some tests and I realized what time it was. It's like, you know, I can check in. From live from New York, it's Ray Scott. What do you got going there? It looks like you got a Leroy's back at the same trick. Do what? So it looks like Leroy is back there playing the same trick. <laughs> playing the, your robot is doing position <laughs> control. <laughs> and... So I printed, I had them print a new banner with the uh, the April tags on it. And I got a new camera so we could actually see stuff. Oh, better tricks. And it came with a better slash different mount. So it's mounted higher, but it's also front heavy, which is why I tried to do that. Add some batteries to it. Maybe that'll hold it down. It uh, it's just about right. I think I need another another Lego piece on top of it, but I I'm not real happy with it because I can't get to the power button. Power button's right there, and I can't get to it. So I got to do something with it anyway. I was actually thinking with this particular mount, sticking an April tag on the robot itself from the top, and just sticking this in the center looking down, having a, having a, uh, another ESP32 up in the air, having the two talk to each other and doing that, but I don't know. <laughs> I haven't even made it work once yet. So. <laughs> Close to the come. Um, so at the at, at home, it seemed like it was working fine, and then of course I get it down here, and it goes in the opposite direction from what I want. So, but yeah, I mean that that makes sense, right? Um, I. I don't know, I, because 
because I had those cards laid out, it kept pushing the cards around. So I think that was causing some some issues. Now that I have a thing that that it can't push around, I'm hopefully I'll get it working better. But when I brought it down here, see it should have said with the other camera, it had the other camera on it, but it should have gone, saw this one and moved forward and saw this one and said that it was facing west. But it said, sometimes it would say south and sometimes it would say north. And it never did that at the house. It, it was fine at the house. But I really noticed the problem when it was facing this direction and saw this tag which means that it had to turn to its left. And it saw this tag, which means that it had to turn again. And when it saw this tag, it thought it was facing south. And that's where I saw the biggest, the biggest problem. So who's telling you where it started? Yeah, instead of where where it's actually facing. But now that I have this camera mounted the way I have this camera and it can see two tags at once, it shouldn't have to move at all. It should just see this tag and this tag and go north. Okay. But you're still working on the so software to do that? Yes. Now, because it won't see this tag until, unless it was sitting back here, I've got to figure out, you know, it sees this tag and this tag, so this tag doesn't exist to it. So it's sitting on 6-1, so the software would have to take into account that this tag isn't going to be seen. But, I mean, I think, all, I think a lot of that's just math. Just got to do the math correct to, to make it work. But not having it move at right at the start, I think that's going to solve a whole lot of problems. Because now if it's sitting here, sees this tag, this tag, or no, it sees this tag and this tag, at least it knows this is a border tag. So it should know that it's facing this way just because it sees that border tag. At least that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. Well, it's a good job. You've got a nice uh, large table there so you can uh, run all your experiments. Yeah. Kitchen table is really the biggest table I've got at the house is the kitchen table, and it's not quite big enough. But you know, it's big enough to at least get it working. I don't know. I'm hoping that, that it actually will do what I think it's going to do. And the idea is just print another banner just for the sake of printing another banner. So Ray, what is the material you're cutting? Ray. Ray's on mute. Okay. <laughs> you must so you be, pro probably can't hear me. It must be noisy over there. Oh, maybe not. So Ray. Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Um, I was saying I don't know what the material is. I think it might be PETG. Um, PETG has been a really popular uh, plastic for doing stencils and face masks and other stuff. But um, it's there's so how of, how thick is it? Um, that thick. Oh, so is okay. Like thumb fingernail thick, not quite thumbnail thick. Okay. Um, 
outfits. He's got some other stuff that's uh, it's it's a poster board and foam core. That's what that is. Uh-huh. She's rich. Look at all this this uh, plywood she's got. She's not even using it. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's all good. Yeah, she's got some foam core, some cardboard, some uh, BTG, some some other fun stuff. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot, Steve. Michael Turner had one Raspberry Pi four, Raspberry Pi four eight gig in yeah. stock this morning. I don't know if it's still there or not. I doubt it. It was fifty nine dollars. Well, that's not particularly bad. Kenny's here. Hi, Kenny. Yay. Stopped at McDonald's for another milkshake. No milkshake. No milkshake. Yeah. Stopped at another McDonald's, got any iced tea? No iced tea. You need to get the manuals. SOP three of cover that ice cream uh, coming in the ice cream or cake. Nope. That's SOP for McDonald's. <clears throat> so what did you get? Something strawberry. So it's like a milkshake? No, it's not a milkshake. It looks like a slurpee. Yep, slurpee of some sort. I was like, I have something. Cherry. <laughs> some kind of red fruit, huh? <laughs> some red dye. Sugar and red dye number two. Yeah. All kind of sunk to the bottom. So I got a new 25 millimeter lens for one of my cameras. Okay. And it, uh, I used it today. Post has disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, it's probably because I never turned it on. <sighs> that would help. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll fix it. All right. Try it again. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. See, it said it said east. It went east. Oh, boy, that is pretty good. Yeah, that's from a little over 100 foot. Oh, yeah, uh, 16 was a little West. too, a little too 12 and 16, just not quite enough. And I push it, and the only reason I'm able to use it is I can go to 15 frames per second now with that uh, quad i7. Hmm. So you could almost identify the drivers that way. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's you can't see on that frame, but at the bottom it I could you could read the uh, you could read the name on the the step. step. Okay. Is the majority is coming one way or coming another way? Kind of be either way. Either way. Yeah. Running at 15 frames per second with a 25 millimeter, I can get them. I, I could push it to 20. I may try 20 just for giggles, but I couldn't fly six with the old days all I could do. I thought maybe you could run an extension cord from the house out to the road, put that camera on the stand, okay, and when they go by, flash. Yeah, well, what you what you find out is you can get closer, but it blurs, mm -hmm. and for some reason, further away with a telephoto lens helps it not blur so much. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
Art could probably explain that to us. Art? Uh, well, I'm <laughs> Okay, I think it's a matter of a depth of focus of that fo of that zoom lens. It's mm -hmm. uh, it just doesn't work up close. Could be is it a macro good. zoom or a telephoto zoom? It's a uh, telephoto. Okay, so a telephoto zoom has a minimum uh, focusing distance. All right. Uh, it could be operator error. Yeah. Well, we weren't going to say that. <laughs> Probably not. All right. Bye. Um, okay. Sorry, uh, a telephoto zoom and a macro zoom. So a telephoto zoom is going to basically be able to come into focus at an infinite distance or uh, a minimum distance of several meters away. Uh, a macro zoom is still going to have a minimum distance, probably like um, 15 inches, and then you know, zooming in further. But you can get adapter lenses, magnifier lenses, and you can actually zoom in and have a distance from the camera lens to the target of only like two inches or, or even less sometimes if you're trying to get into like a, a flower petal or a bee or, or a ring or you're looking at the inside of a diamond. So if you have a macro um, zoom with uh, macro additional lenses, uh, you can do that. Um, but if you're looking at telephoto, yeah, you're gonna have a minimum distance. Um, and then the better the camera lens, um, if it has an adjustable aperture, um, a lot of times they'll have like a 1.2 um, uh, f-stop and you basically have to run that with a full open aperture with high speed shutter speeds um, or else they just don't put anything into focus very well at all. I ran into that with some of my uh, photography Canon equipment. Um, even though it's supposed to be like a 1.2 to four f-stop, um, you have to run it at 1.2 and just run it fast. Um, Cause it, even at 1.4, it just, everything comes out fuzzy. This is an f2. Is this one an f2? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not gonna that's not have, bad. that's not gonna have much of a depth of focus though. Cause depth you're- Depth of field, mm. yeah depth of focus. The depth of focus is inverse to the uh, f-stop. So at f-22, you got a hell of a uh, depth of field, but at f-2, you don't have much. Right. So is it working, Leroy? Um, no. And yes. Well, it's moving around. <laughs> so if it if it sees the border, it seems like that just messes the whole entire thing up. But if it uh, is just anywhere in the grid, it's fine. <laughs> hmm. So right now, you know, it was facing north and it turned. It should, that, this should be east. It's saying that it's facing west. Which is exactly 100 degrees, 160 degrees out, 180 degrees out. Should be me. But <clears throat> seems like if it's just inside the grid and doesn't see the border. North. Supposed to be north. Supposed to be north. Oh, good. It's, north? Face, it's facing north. Okay. And actually, it's facing north. Oh, okay. Ish. Well, that's good. Cool. So it's just got east and west confused. No, it's it's got if it's it if it sees the border, any of the border markers, that just throws it for a loop. That is probably something you know. You know, that's, that's probably my algorithm. My math probably was all funky or something. 
Can you adjust the field of view so that it doesn't, it's less likely to see the border? Um, no, no. It's the tags, not this edge. The, these, these tags, 202, 203, 200, and 201 are all the border tags. So it's, oh. not, it's not the edge that it's seen, it's, it's the tags. Okay. Um, I mean, I could write the software to, to just reject those tags altogether, but I wanted those tags so that it knew it was outside of the grid or that it was getting close to the grid. That's, that's one reason why I had this, this idea that if I stuck the camera above it, it might actually be better because it might be able to see the whole entire picture. Because the camera can read, it'll, it'll be able to read all, all 45, all 49 of these tags. So it's a seven by seven array of tags? Mm hmm Plus, plus. Uh, nine by nine minus four. Yeah, it's nine by nine minus four. If I stick the camera up above it, though. So if you yeah. hang it off the ceiling? High enough where it could see all the tags, or at least all the tags inside the grid. Um, and then stick an ESP32 on that, or some other wireless method on that. I think that would work. Doesn't it boot it? The camera does it. Yeah, that surprises me. No, that 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 was one of the. Uh, things that this camera had problems. I mean, it was it was an interesting idea, but when they added the microphone to it, it killed a bunch of things. things. And people started using trying to use the microphone, and it would shut other things off. Yeah, and it was there. locked in. It was locked in like the firmware, so. They had to issue like an emergency firmware to disable the microphone completely. Hmm. Um, but that was the first, that, that was their first thing. This is, this one is the same model, but it's been updated twice with different hardware. So it actually should be a better camera. And they should have removed the microphone because it never worked in the first place. <laughs> but I'm sitting there thinking, that if that was up in the air on a tripod or something, and there was an April tag on the robot itself. It could see where that was, and because the April tags have a rotation tool, it should be able to orient itself. Then there's no point in a robot ever moving. It knows where it is. It knows where it is. Right. Well, see, that was one thing. I think Ray said it last week or, or the week before was if it could see two of the tags, then it shouldn't have to move. So right now it can see at least two tags. It's actually seeing three tags right now. But it sees them obliquely. It doesn't see them straight down. Correct. But with the, with, it, it knows the tag number. It can see, I can't, it can see tag number three and tag number 10 where it's sitting at right now. So if I used software and said, no, I see tag 10, I see tag three, 
I see tag 10 first, and then I see tag three because of the position of them. I should be able to figure out that it's facing north. And the well, are you sure that it is decoding the tag number properly? Yes. It looks at them obliquely. Yes, yes. There's no doubt that it's, um, there's no doubt that it's reading the tag numbers correctly. Okay. I, because, um, and I know this because I didn't use it on this camera, but it's, it, it's basically the same camera, the old camera. I just tell one of those cards in front of it. Mm -hmm. it tell me what the, what the tag number was and everything. I throw it down and hold another tag in front of it and it would tell me. So and it's doing all of that processing on the camera itself. On the camera itself, yeah. It's sending all that information down this serial line into there. And this is going to do all the the data that it's sending. Um, and it sees two this way. If he's looking the other way, he could see the same two. That's the data it's sending. Mm -hmm. ah. It's sending all that all that information down that serial line. Looks like a picture. Kind yeah. of. I, I really want to. Uh, so zero is. So no those are good. Oh, this is. <laughs> those are JSON records. Yes. Yes. Um. And I think I said you know last week or the week before. The important ones that I think I need are X, Y, uh, X, Y, W, and H, uh, probably CX, or definitely the ID, probably CX and CY, and maybe the rotation. I haven't quite figured out what the rotation is. That rotation is in radians or what? I think so. I haven't quite figured out what the ro rotation is trying to tell me. What is the X and Y translation? Um, so if I can't really. I would have thought that was a reference to where it had been a moment ago. I used, I used a big sheet of paper for that one. And, or did I? I think I used a sheet of paper. I see a couple of IDs in there. No, yeah, that's all 37. It's also 37. It's, um, I have to find, find the one that I had where it had all the sheet of paper. It, it's like, if it's full all of them, it, it starts off at, at some number over here and then it just mm -hmm. does a progressive uh, thing. So it's, so the X changed a little, the Y did change just slightly, but it's a, it's a, like a progression. So if it saw this and it said, um, that's 54 by 19 and it saw this one at like 64 by 19, you know, they were in a line together. Okay. So, so I see ID of 37 on there mm -hmm. and I see a, see a family of 16. What's that? Um, April tags are slightly different than, um, Rukus and, and some other some other tags, they have families. Um, and let me stop sharing the screen. Like the tag is tag thirty uh, tag thirty six H eleven. That is the family number. Okay. Um, different families of different tags 
uh, are either easier or harder to read by various camera systems and whatever. Tag 3611 is one of the easiest ones for uh, consumer grade chips to read. Um, okay. It also has, uh, I think it's 512 different numbers for the markers. So you can, you can have up to 512 different things. Some of the families have smaller groups of numbers that you can have. Some of, some of them have larger groups of numbers. But once you get outside of certain families, you're de dealing more into an industrial kind of situation where you might need a couple of thousand numbers. And you're probably dealing with better cameras, not, not cheap, not quote unquote cheap consumer grade cameras. Um, this particular camera, I could tell it to read the other, I could tell it to read any, any of the other families. Um, this tag 36 is pretty much the easiest tag for it to read um, without doing a whole lot of other stuff. Like um, one of the one of the higher uh, resolution tags needs you to turn this down to QQV video instead of just VGA. Okay. Q, 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 maybe it's QQQ VGA. It's, it's like quarter VGA. Real small, yeah. Um, it's got like three or four different QQQ VGAs hmm. to it. And I assume tag 36 is six by six inside the frame. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's right, yeah. So the next one up is tag 49. And um, like uh, Aruku markers, uh, they work similar, but are a little different. They, uh, they, I don't think they have the border. April tags have to have the border around them. White border? The white, white border. The white border. Okay. Um, it has to be there, otherwise it won't read them. Um, there's a couple other weird little quirks, but these, these basically came from uh, University of Michigan because the Aruku marker tags changed their license to something that was unfriendly to makers. And this is using a BSD license, so it's more of a friendly thing. And that's why that's why April tags came about though was because Aruku's changed their license to become unfriendly. So the, the people at University of Michigan said, well, the heck with it. We'll just make our own tag. Okay. And I don't know. I don't know if you remember um, a few weeks ago, we were watching the video at the Amazon plant where they're where the, their robots were reading something on the floor moving along. Yeah. I'm pretty sure those were April tags that it was reading because it had a border around it. And if you go to Walmart and you see tags on the wall, um, that is, that's for their, their, uh, their, their sweeping robots. So they're sweeping and those are, I'm pretty sure those are April tags. Hmm. Because they've got a border around them, not because of any other reason, but because they've got a border around them. 
Um, I don't know. Probably could take my little camera in there and go, hey, are you an April tag? <laughs> Does it feed back that information too? Or do you have to reload the firmware for different kinds of tags? There is there's a, a firmware that I can put on there that will read any April tag, mm -hmm. any of them. Or at least it will tell you that it's in this April tag, tag family. Um, and then there's there's one that uh, it's a little bit more complicated, but it will tell you if it's in a Roku or if it's an April tag. So, but if I read what I read correctly, the software for the Arukus can only go up to the point where it was still more or less a free license to use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, in, any of the new Arukus that are out, it can't read because it, they don't want to pay for it. They don't want to pay for it. They don't want you to pay for it. <laughs> they don't want to deal with it. <laughs> so April tags are at least for now, the best thing. <laughs> so what happens is this uh, four speaker in Walmart hit somebody, is that possible? It's a lot more likely for somebody to run into the truth. They, uh, uh, the Walmart in Franklin that uses one, they, they actually told me to watch out because it gets ornery and it will run over people. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing weighs 500 pounds. It's, it, it, the, the guy there, he said, just stay out of its way. It, it, Does it have a horn on it that beeps when it's coming? Um, I've heard it beeping. I think it was when it was backing up. Um, it's got a couple of cameras on it. It is supposed to avoid people. And it does not move fast. It's it's a pretty slow yeah. uh, sweeper, but he said that the the camera that's on it gets dirty or whatever, and it just doesn't see like it's supposed to. And it's ran into displays and all kinds of stuff. Nice. Yeah, I I've never seen one of these. How big are these? Uh, <laughs> these are not like your little floor vacuum sweepers. No. Two He's, feet by five feet and four feet tall. They're big. Oh, looks okay. Like, looks like a small Zam, Zamboni or something. Yeah. It's small Zamboni. Yeah. Yeah. It, you can't miss them. Um, I, I think the best advice, though, is if you see one, take a picture of it and stay away from it. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. you will. If you walk around and you pay attention about uh, waist high on most of the pillars in Walmart, there is a some sort of marker. It's either an April tag or an Aruku or something. And just above, it will tell you the frame uh, and the location of, of, of that marker. And it's... I think it's just there specifically so the robot doesn't get lost. So this is right above where the crash marks are on the post. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> yeah, it, they're they're uh, usually about waist high because that's where the camera is in in those uh, thing in that sweeper thing is about waist high. Um, but you can't miss them you, if you're look. If you look at the pillars, you can't miss them. They're there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, supposedly Sam's Club uses the same thing and Costco uses the same thing. So do they, do they use it while there are people in the store or after hours? Um, while people are in the store. Walmart uses it while people are there, yeah. Some okay. still open 24 hours. Um, well, that varies from Walmart to Walmart. But. 
I've seen them out moving around at three in the afternoon. Okay. Every Walmart, if you ask, if you ask one of the employees about it, they'll tell you what its name is because every one of them has a different name, and usually it's not a, it's My not a lady. nice name. <laughs> usually it's a um, rather bad name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um. Have you seen like those commercial mopper, uh, moppers? Uh, usually people walk behind them. Uh, You're pulse. talking about the ones with the big swirling brush? Yeah, kind of. That's yeah. what this thing kind of reminds me of. With a big curved rubber blade on the back to catch all the water it misses. Well, then they have the polishers, which are essentially dry, except for the polish. That's, that's what this thing kind of reminds me of, except that it, it's more like a Zimboni. Somebody could actually sit on it and drive it. They're, most of them have steering wheels. Hmm. Oh. So how do they keep it away from the, the shelves? Well, that's just it. It... If it's dirty, if it's camera's dirty, it's going to run into something. <laughs> they had one at the Walmart near my work at Risenfeld. It, and that was a pretty rough Walmart. I never saw it run into anything. I, I saw it out quite a bit. It was just slowly going down one side of the aisle and then come back the other way. I, I've never seen them run into anything, but according to, to the worker there in Franklin, it runs into stuff all the time. If you're standing there and it's working right, it comes up, it just stops and waits. Yeah. It, it can't be moving. If it's moving two miles an hour, I'd be surprised. It, it moves pretty oh, slow. Like well, that's what I'm saying. It, it's, it's, it moves slow. Two miles, yeah, two, two yeah. miles, an, two two miles an hour is, that's a, that's a walk. It's four foot, isn't it? Hmm? It's four foot, right? Okay, four foot per second. I think it goes that far every second. Nah. Yeah. It's, it, it's much slower than I walk. I walk slow. I don't know. I've walked up to it to them a couple of times. See, it, it, the one that, that in Franklin, it doesn't have any cameras or any sensors on the back. You could go up and start pushing on, on it and ride and ride it <laughs> around. It, it would not know the difference. Mm -hmm. Its only sensor is, is right there on front. It's got a camera mm -hmm. right on front. It's got bumpers all the way around. Yeah. So it doesn't back up. It normally just goes forward and then rotates and goes forward. Um, oh, I've seen them. I've seen it back up. Maybe not. Yeah. Because mine doesn't. Mine just goes down the aisle and swoops around and goes back down the other side of the aisle. I've never seen it back up. So I saw it over in the automotive section where the, where the tires are, and there's no real way for it to turn, the aisle is pretty narrow. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't really go anywhere else. You gotta, so I've seen it back, it go down the tire aisle and then back, back down that aisle yeah. and then move over to the next tire aisle and go down. So each Walmart must be a little different. Sure. Good for but those, the, that was that was also the, the, the tire guy was also the guy that told me that it, it hits a bunch of stuff too. So, <laughs> I'm good for a field trip. We should all go bully one of these and see what it does. <laughs> Kick on it. Yeah, you shadow it with your camera and take a video of what's going on. I think I know Sam's Club uses them, and I think Costco uses them. 
Well, these days they're probably trying, probably having a hard time getting sweepers. That's a lot of cameras. Oh, yep. Yeah. This is the four power. That'd be a 12 millimeter there. And this would be the 25 millimeter. The where you really tell the difference is right there is a little uh, RG59 cable on the bottom of that post. Yeah. And let me show you the other camera now. Well, you, and Maul just drew by. And there's the other, that's a full power camera. Is that the that's cable coming to your house, Jim? That's across the street. That's yeah, a cable that's across the street. 75 feet away from the camera. That's about 100 feet. And let's look at the other one again. And there it is. That's where oh, yeah. a millimeter. The other one, you can't even tell there's a cable there. <laughs> Yeah, that's quite distinct. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah. Difference between 12 and 25. And how many frames per second is that now? Uh, the little one I'm running at uh, 15. And I think I can run it at 20. I, I might try it at 20. I, got, I, was, I was shocked I could get, usually I can't get it past like 10. But I, you know, I got that new quad i7. And it does scream. So the limitation is the computing power or the bandwidth or what? I'm not sure. That one, I think, is rated at 25. The camera is rated at 20 or 25. I think 25 frames per second. Uh, you, can, you can adjust the frame rate of that camera. Yeah, I'm not sure what the the claim frame rate is the, that camera the 25 millimeter is a it's a 920 it's a sony chip mm -hmm. 920, 920p 960 960p yeah it's a sony i don't know they, they were good they had nice crisp pictures Picture's good. It's a, a, I think that's like, uh, what is that? Two megapixel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, but with the, the lens, it doesn't make any difference. With the lens, it doesn't matter. You know? and I got plenty of resolution there. Just need the lens and the lens <clears throat> does it. Oh, there comes somebody. Uh-oh. <laughs> and that was not said to read the license plate. You absolutely could, no doubt. But it definitely it definitely does. The the you don't the the you get two megapixels, you can read, you can read the sides of them. You just need to get the speed and oh cool. That, that thing right in the center is a camera and there's a I don't know if that's a lighter or what that is but there's another sensor right there so how does it clean the floor is it like a vacuum or does it mop it put water out and then yeah, it, it's like a mop so it's got a water reservoir in it someplace i would assume yeah, probably 15, maybe 20 gallons. And another one to pick up most of that. There's there's one that's gray. I think the blue oh. ones are, are older. The blue one is the one that the Walmart and Franklin has. <laughs> so that can be either manned or unmanned. Yes. Yep. And it's hard to see. 
Well, here's a picture of, of a guy riding. So I wonder if it runs into more things with the guy riding it or with the <laughs> <laughs> robot. <Yeah. laughs> I, I can almost guarantee it does. <laughs> There's the back side of the gray one. So what what are those hoses anyway? Just fill it and drain it. Yeah, those those are your your water supply. There's okay. a big red button right on top though. So you can run up to it and, and bash it if it starts running people over. <laughs> so that's the kill button, huh? That's the kill button. <laughs> there's there's actually on the one. Take care, is, Ken. Take care. See ya. Later. Glad you drop by. On the one in Franklin, there's actually two kill buttons. There's one on the front and one on the back. And you can run up and hit it. The question is, does it have a dead man switch? No. So if the driver falls off of the thing, it's not like a motorcycle where you have a dead man switch. You basically, basically it just takes off. <laughs> I, 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 I've seen these things for years. I've never ever seen anybody actually drive. <laughs> yeah, I swear that the one down by Risingfield doesn't, doesn't have, have a place a, for a person. See, the one in Franklin, Looks more like a Zamboni deal, not not like that. It, it's got like the seat is off to the side. It, yeah. But it's there. It's yeah. and it's blue. It's uh, it's an old one. It, it looks like a Zamboni thing. Maybe they retrofit a man one. Couldn't be hard <laughs> with the camera. Yeah. And the throttle control or whatever. The electronics package for that is going to fit in a shoebox. And it's already got all the batteries and everything uh, the one I, I swear the one in in franklin doesn't have any kind of sensors on the back side either it, it does have the kill switch back there but it doesn't have anything else and so what are, huh they're talking about putting those mini satellites around the moon now like the oh yeah Oh yeah, that's interesting. Supposed to be supposed to be ten or twelve of them, I think. So, is that so? The aliens on the far side of the moon can talk to us. I, th I think they had to put a satellite up when they took the Apollo thirteen trips in order to communicate with them. No, okay. they, they need a relay. Like 18 minutes of, of terror. When they were on the back side, they couldn't communicate. Yeah. yeah. Still, yeah, the, okay. But, the, you know, you could be on the wrong side of the satellite, too. Mm -hmm. They had the other half of the rocket up there. See? And they could communicate with that. I mean, that was technically yeah. satellite at that point. Oh, okay. But they didn't launch. Oh, exactly. to do it. Oh, they yeah. use the they use the uh, okay the base. To... Oh, my notification was turned off. Officially, <laughs> how did that happen? I don't know. I love notifications, but notifications are off. You have to have a notifier that notifies you that your notification is off. Hello, notify. At least they tell you when your Wi-Fi is off. Now they will tell you. That's um, mine just turns itself back on. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah. There's a setting in there that. that yeah. I, I um, seen that. After, after ten minutes yeah. or something, it'll turn itself back on. Hmm. hmm. I never noticed that. Yeah. I don't like that. I, 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 I didn't like that idea until one day I completely forgot to turn it on and I was wondering why I was using so much data. And then I went, yeah. oh, 
Okay, I will just turn this on because that's not so bad. It's not so bad. So it doesn't count data when you're using a Wi-Fi, when you're connected to Wi-Fi? Right, right. Yep. It's, I assume you've got an unlimited plan, and most of the home plans are unlimited. Yeah. I also, when, when I was on Republic, I got in the habit of turning the data off. So I turned the data off anyway. But unless I need it, unless I absolutely have to have it. I use this thing more than I wish I did. <laughs> I don't use Wi-Fi at work because you've got to send an email once a week to use it. <laughs> and I have four days left in my, my data collection here. And I've used 1.19 Cool. Yeah. I'm going to switch to Mint. I just haven't yet. Where are you going right now? Straight to Walmart's thing. It's $36 a month. I'm happy with it. I'm connected to Verizon's towers. I I, I don't remember ever having dropped a call. There is it, it, it's actually gotten better this year than, than it was last year, but there's a small dead spot right near the grandkids' school, mm -hmm. and I can make phone calls there. I just don't have data. It's it's the weirdest yeah. thing. <clears throat> but this year, uh, for whatever reason, I only found one small little area on their ground that doesn't have data where last year it was most of their school ground mm -hmm. was without data. I'm, they I'm put in a new out. tower? <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know if they just uh, upgrade the service better or if, if it's a different tower or what they did, but there's still there's still one little area that, that's a dead zone, but I can live with that. I mean, it is what it is. I know Marla has had T-Mobile, and every time we'd go out to see her kids, we'd go through College Corner, and there was about a two mile spot there where it dropped. And mm -hmm. when she's talking to her daughter, that's also on T-Mobile. She works at a school in Liberty, Indiana. And every day when she's on her way home, she calls Marla. And within 30 seconds, it drops. And then she waits and calls back. Like, Why don't you just wait? Yeah. But yeah, and in those places where it drops for them, I've never had a drop at call. And I'm kind of curious who Mint uses. T-Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying out Sling TV. And their video VCR is, it works. Hmm. That works. Yeah, Sling's been in the business a while. Yeah. They got a pretty good package. Pretty good. Sling started out with a TV tune. And you could connect to somebody else's TV tuner. Ah, so I remember that. And they could ah. connect to yours. So if you wanted to watch the football game that was blacked out in your area, you just connect to somebody else's sling box. Wow. Um, or, or you could have watch parties and you yeah. could sit there and watch the same show together. Yeah. They got sued into a blue. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to say, hey, that ain't going to lie. Don't mess with the NFL. Yeah. Hey, guys, I got a good one for you. So um, yesterday, Carol and I were kind of freaking out because we got some 
crazy charges on the PayPal account. And just, I hadn't ordered anything from circuit specialists for over a year. And I, I, I like this website called circuitspecialist.com. And I bought tools and you know, electronics and, you know, the oscilloscope, various stuff. Um, but we got a, got a charge all of a sudden and it was less than $10, but still it's like, what the heck happened? Who, who cracked my password and why am I getting charges from this crazy weird company? I haven't talked to them for over a year. So um, after like three emails back and forth, tracking down the ID code for the transaction ID and stuff over PayPal, we found out that it's where I placed an order 15 months ago at Circuit Specialists. And they didn't have one item in stock. So they put it on back order. And 15 months later, decided, <laughs> I'm not joking. 15 <laughs> months later, decided, hey, it just came into inventory. We'll go ahead and charge Mr. Scott for the part and for shipping. And we'll go ahead and send it to him. But they didn't send me any kind of email. The description in PayPal didn't say what the part was or nothing. It just said um, pre-approved authorized payment. <laughs> that was nice of them, though. At least they sent you your part. They well, no, no. Them. they they It hasn't been shipped yet. So they just made a charge, and I was like, what the heck is this for? That, that should not happen. Yeah, 15 months later so is this this is still something you need no but i'll take it <laughs> I, I had bought something from my i think it was digikey and it said it was in stock when i bought it and two days later i got an email that said we're sorry this is out of stock we can either uh, refund your money, refund your payment, or put it on back order for you. And I just, I said, refund, and got my money, no problem. About, I don't know, it was probably two or three weeks later, I get an email from them and said, hey, it's back in stock, we're going to charge your card. <laughs> like, no. Two or three well, weeks, at least they gave you notice that said, hey, do you want to buy this or we, we think you want to charge your card? But 15 months later? Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. That's a little ridiculous. <laughs> I was like, what the hell, guys? But I, oh, I was like, hey. I, I, I had assumed assume assume that when they gave me my money back that the order had been canceled and apparently the order wasn't canceled. It was just Move to a back order situation. <laughs> well, I thought you guys would just get a kick out of that one. My wife, she didn't really think it was funny until today. <laughs> then she's more like, yeah, well, that was absurd, not funny. Ordered, ordered some stuff from Mauser not too long ago for the first time in like years. The address they had for me was a place I lived at like 10 years ago. Oh, nice. Yeah. That was fun. I was trying to change it, change the address. And every time I would go to, to the shipping thing, it would bring up the old address. And when I would go and look at the addresses in, in the Thing it would say my current address. And I'm like, this address has been deleted. Why is this still showing up? This is the address we're going to ship to. No, if you ship it to to somewhere in Hamilton, then somebody else will be getting my stuff. <laughs> I want my toys. I want my toys. <laughs> Finally got that that resolved. That one was basically I had to uh, log out mm -hmm. of the system and log back in for to figure out that, that I had made a change. I changed my address for something not long ago. 
it took a week for it to actually change. And I'm on some mailing list that I've unsubscribed from multiple times, and they won't unsubscribe at least at least multiple times. <laughs> and considering just making any time they send me something, it just sends it back to them. Ah, oh, yes. Sea wolf. Sea wolf. Yeah, you remember that one? Yep. That was, that was a good one. <laughs> Vaguely. I mean, uh, at this point, I probably read them, I don't know, 15, uh, 15 20 years ago. 1914, the one is written. So yeah, well, I didn't read it then. I know that for sure. That's what I thought. It <laughs> it's not about the submarine. Yeah, that, that's a good book. That was a good movie, wasn't it? See what? Yeah. Submarine. The only Jack London thing I remember was the one we had to read in school with Buck, the dog. And I don't know, they, the dog had gotten taken and then transported to Alaska and they were using it to pull sleds and stuff. I think oh, was, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Of course, I didn't have to read it. <laughs> it's different when you have to Trying read it. to remember what it was called. <clears throat> I don't I don't remember. That. White Fang, maybe? White Fang, yeah, that's one. Call of the Wild. And Call, of the wild. Oh. Call of the Wild. Well, there's White Fang. Yeah. And that's about a wolf. Um. Yeah, that one we read as a short story. I think it was a much abridged version in open highways. Yeah, it would have happened to been because that was a full length novel. Yeah, they even had drawings. Jeez. Okay, in open highways, it was toward the middle of the book. And they, they had a drawing of after they had captured White Fang, and they've got a stick in its mouth with a rope tied behind its head, and the guy is holding it like this, paws down. Damn. Weird stuff I remember. Well. Jim says we've got about four minutes left. That's the way it looks. Oh. We might just uh, call it because we were late last. We were late last week. <laughs> we definitely were. <laughs> so, but that's okay. I mean, they're, they're, the knitting club is no longer following you guys. I assume. For a while, Knitting Club was the next one that was in the uh, boardroom. <laughs> yeah, everybody, everybody standing out there with pitchforks. And... No. <laughs> yeah, right. And torches, huh? Torches. Uh, they weren't every week, but anyway, they were like once every other week or once every yeah. fourth week. Or yeah. But when we were there, we paid attention. <laughs> we <to> pay attention. <laughs> Yeah, Wednesdays is, is a slightly different game. <laughs> That's true. That was when we were on Thursdays. Yeah. I assume that some of those clubs have probably dropped off. They changed their they changed their game a bit. Some of them they ran off. Like that for a while. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Huh. Might be because of those four updates that are available. <clears throat> I doubt it. <laughs> I don't know. DH, DHCP is one of the updates. It could be. It is. <laughs> tied together. That doesn't have anything to do with that camera. But whatever. <laughs> I probably hit a button or something. 
Yeah, yeah. the meet, meeting presenter uh, screen is totally frozen, has been for a while now. There we go. Here we go. Somehow or another, it switched to the HP, the internal camera, mm -hmm. but it hmm. didn't actually switch. Yeah. So I had to switch it back to that camera and then switch it back and back. <laughs> okay. I, I, I must have hit something. It's kind of like Windows. Yeah. <laughs> I must have hit something without knowing it anyway. All right. Okay. It's, it's time. That, yeah, <laughs> we'll see everybody next week. See you next week. Take care. Oh, good night. Bye. Bye.